Hi everybody, it's Jeanette Hilda. So this is a little cinch journal that I made using the Boho Style Kit by SS Digital Studio. And I did a few fun things in here that um, I've kind of done on other things, but never in a book. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so this gorgeous, gorgeous kit. Um, feathers, dream catchers. So I wanted to, uh, the cover, as you can see, I kind of wanted something that had the same vibrancy that I got from the papers. And I wanted to kind of, I'd, um, sort of like the dream catcher, but I didn't have a, a dream catcher die. I do have this die. So this, what it is, and let me get it like that. So what I've done here is it's kind of like a stained glass. So let me open this and give you another effect. There we go. Okay. So if you, the only reason I've shown it to you from this side is that it's hard for me to turn it around and let you look at through the front and see the effect. So what it is, is what I've done is taken a die. So this is a layered die. That's why when you look at it like this, um, you can see how they don't match. It's not because I didn't take the time to try and match them. It's because this is actually a layered die. They're meant to, when you put them on top of each other, to be offset. And then you slowly build it. And so it creates a 3D look down into it. And I could have just stuck with the one die and made both sides, but I knew I was going to have trouble lining it up anyways and I didn't want to kill myself trying to line up so, and I like that effect anyways um, of how they're not quite right it adds more lines to it sort of like the you know the dream catcher has a whole bunch of uh, so anyways how I did this is with a oops there we go with a uh, so first um, cut it out with the die uh, about three times depends on the thickness of your cardstock. Um, so I use pretty heavy cardstock. So each side is about three times through, and then glue them together. Um, I use double-sided sheets. So before I run it through, I put the double-sided um, glue sheet onto the back of the paper, then run it through. That way, I don't have to deal with all that craziness. But you can just glue it. The only thing that is, is that, so how I make this, there's two ways that I um, like to do my stained glass. One is using a deco glaze. It's basically a an acrylic paint that has a, a glazing to it. I, I think Tim Holtz, I think he came out with a uh, embossing powder glaze, but what I use is it's, um, Mine is from, oops, to Fabrica Decoro. Ooh, there we go. And that's not gonna focus because I don't have the autofocus on, but Fabrica Decoro Deco Glaze. And they come in these little bottles. And what I do is I have a um, little tray and I pour a little bit in there. And then I use either, I like to use one of these guys, which is, um, silicone brush if you can see that it's just a silicone nib these are um, sometimes sold for doing working with uh, hot glue they're also sold in the makeup section <laughs> so you can get these anywhere and I use I have one that's a little more pointy here this one's you can see it's got a little point to it oops and I just dip it in bring up a little bit of the glaze and then I just tap it in there. You can, depending on how big the area is, you can pour and then use this to just push it around. And depending on how well, you know, um, it does kind of shrink in while as it dries. So you may have to go back in and put some extra in to fill in some of the holes. And then you get this 
effect that is very much like, let me see, try and see if I can't hold that up. See, it's it looks a lot like glass pieces. Isn't that awesome? And then of course, when you get the light through it, let me see if I can hold this such, there we go. <laughs> I kind of have to hold it off because my light is to the right of me. Isn't that gorgeous? And it just, it really looks like stained glass. Now the second method that you can use for this is exact same thing. Um, oh, sorry, the part I forgot that you don't see because it's underneath the paper is after I cut it out, glue it down to an acrylic sheet. Let's see if I put my, I think I put my acrylic sheets back over where they belong, so <laughs> unfortunately I don't have them right next to me. Um, I get mine in packets and for, uh, differing weights, which means flexibility, really. And I use the a pretty stiff, but not, you know, um, totally stiff sheets, and it really doesn't matter, it just as long as it's not flexible, really flexible. And then I glue my die cut right down onto the acrylic sheet. That's what gives you the surface that you're going to use to pour in the glaze. Um, like I said, the other way that you can do this is the same exact thing. Die cut, put onto an acrylic sheet. But instead of using the, the glaze and painting it in, you can use something like the Sakura or any other brand glaze pens. I don't have one of those up here with me. Um, they're just, they look like regular old uh, Bic pens, you know, um, in, you write with them, but it's a glaze. And so it has a 3D effect and it's see-through. The only thing that I, um, I, I do, they work just as well and you'll get the same, sort of same look. It's just that they, you're not gonna get a lot out of those pens, right? And where I can pour this in and really fill up the spot. With the glaze pens, you're really just putting an extremely thin layer. So you'll either have to go over it many times or you're just going to have to, it's gonna be a lot paler and it's not gonna have quite, this really looks like glass pieces. Whereas with the glaze pens, it looks a little more like colored glass as opposed to actual, you know, if that makes sense. <laughs> it looks like it's just been kind of painted on as opposed to, yeah, filling in. So I do prefer this method, but the Sakura glaze pens are probably a lot easier to get, um, especially in the number of colors that you might like. Um, and they work just as well. And like I said, there are other brands of glaze pens. So... I have a really cheap set that works just as well as the Sakuras. So, so that's how I did the cover. And like I said, I wanted a, something bright and happy and that really captured the look. So I'll get to this when I get to that page. <laughs> I'm gonna, so I have, I used my cinch for this, but I didn't have large enough rings. And so I'm having a little, I did my best to crimp it and it's almost too much. So, but I don't, um, at the moment, I don't have the access to bigger rings. I can't seem to find them. So I had to deal with this little one. But, I mean, it makes it poof a little bit, but it's working. It's just that I kind of have to be careful with it. All right, let's go inside. So, I used uh, craft paper as, like, my pages mostly. And I used the craft that I have comes in a number of colors. So I've mostly used, there's like three um, colors of brown and also a black. And the black is black craft, not black cardstock, if that makes sense. And I also picked, I really liked the blue that you can see in all the pictures from the kit. So I pulled that out and found a nice matching blue, it's kind of, getting just a little bit washed out in the image, but uh, yeah, it's just going to, it won't autofocus because I have that turned off. <laughs> but yeah, so the turquoise kind of um, colored stitching as well. So all the pages are stitched. So this is a journal kit. So of course the pages are meant, you know, made so that you can make a journal and fold them. And I just simply cut them down the middle and 
then I, I sized my book so that they were they're sized perfectly for cutting right down the middle of the page. The ephemera sheets have pockets and lots of little guys for decorating and also these really great words. So I just used my We Are Memory Keepers punch board to make a tab on the card. Isn't that gorgeous? The dream catcher, all the feathers. All right, so the, this particular kit has a huge assortment of these really big tags. So, of course, it leads itself to a tag book, which um, the designer has made. You can find a flip through of the tag book that she made on the group website, and everything will be down below. I wanted a bit different. I used the tags as, of course, tags, and then these little flip outs. So first, I had this really great kind of boho earring in just one. It was in, I had it, you know, on eBay. I like to get things on eBay and I buy them in bulk. So I get a whole bunch of stuff. And it was a bunch of jewelry findings and beads. And this earring all by its little self was just in that mix. And it was just a little circle and then it had these danglies. And these were the danglies. And so it worked perfectly. I was, um, that it had actually four of the little dangles. I only used three of them, but it worked really well. And so this is on a, a little clip here. And I'm using that to hold open this little flip, or sorry, to hold closed this little flip. So what this is, is two of the tags. So each of the, in the kit, you'll get two tags on a, one piece of paper. And what I did was I took one of them and it's just folded and then stitched around to leave a pocket on the top. And this is one of the smaller tags in the kit, which all the all of the uh, tags I backed with some of the craft paper to give them flexibility and um, weight because I wanted to be able to put them in these pockets and hold in place rather than sinking down because you can see they're only about here. I didn't want them to go to the bottom so both the weight of it and the ribbon is keeping them from just falling all the way down. And I didn't want to glue it. So anyway, that's just then stitched around and before I did that, so then I have this other tag from one of the pages and this one I actually cut in half. So took a piece of fabric and hope so you can see in between there is a piece of fabric. Just layered that down on the tag and sewed around that and then because I also have to attach it to the page, so it's attached to the page, that's why this one has been cut because then I just put um, another piece of fabric and sandwiched. So if I had folded it like this one I couldn't have done that. And then it's again underneath this page and then stitched as well. So then you get this really nice little flip out. And I like to use the fabric. You know, you can't tell that it's fabric. There's no way you can look. <laughs> it's so tiny. But I like that because it gives me real flexibility. And I don't have to worry about the paper cracking from so much folding. The fabric should last a really long time, if not forever. Probably longer than the paper. <laughs> And like I said, I don't want this to, to flap open, right, when I'm turning the page. So the little clip keeps it closed. And plus it gives me a nice little place to put my beads. So, so then two of the tags I used as pages. So again, just stitched around in a U. And inside of them I put these really great long tags that you get in the kit. And again, these have been placed on some craft and stitched. And they fit nicely in here. And I'll say also, since I'm looking down into this pocket, I had had a misprint 
had a many pages <laughs> and I would, went away and everything printed so badly they were awful but it was only on one side so all of the printing of all of my tags and everything that needed the heavier paper was all done on those misprinted papers so recycle never throw that away so yes two of the pages are just those tags folded another little page now here I show you this little book this is there's another page that has two tags that are also set nicely where you can again just fold you know cut around the outside of them and then fold them and you get so it looks like this on the page I really like when they're nice and close because like you can do things like this so all I did is I took some paper this is thin really thin cardstock and or sorry craft and put that in and then just ran it through my sewing machine. Shoot. And you get a cute little book. And here I have this great little piece from the ephemera, but it felt like it needed something, so I just stitched, uh, stitched, stenciled <laughs> a little feather up there. Another tab. And here we have a half pocket and then this is from the ephemeris kit this is a, a sticker that I had in my stash just add a little punch I love these journal cards and again they're backed on the craft all right and here's another page with the fold out this one made a little What do you call this? <laughs> a little poofy thing with stuff. <laughs> I, my brain has just gone on lockdown. And it's a bunch of sorry silk, sorry yarn, different little doodads, different yarns. And then just, put, again, put on the clip so that it can hold in this little flip out. Oops. Let's see. How I, there we go. So pretty love these colors and of course plenty of space in this book for writing or drawing if you want to use that cute and then I had I don't like to not use my papers if at all possible so I had used a piece out of one of the pages and not the whole thing and I had this um, bit left. So I just used it to make a little pocket. Why not? And this is from the ephemera kit. One of the cards. And of course it's being stink. Oh, because I have this on. <laughs> it's a little tired. There we go. And here's another one of the corner pockets. The journal card. And then here what I did was embossed a feather. Let's see if you see that. It's in clear, so that the, the bot, and so it makes it real subtle. Then I just added a couple of stickers for a little splash of color. The tabs with, I like so this goes, dream catcher. Oop. This flip is on this side, so again we have the clip with some more beads from that earring. And another little flip out. And again, there's a little tag. And like I said, that page that had the folded, you know, the little smaller tags that could be full. Just did it again. <laughs> Some more of the craft paper and then just zoop right down the middle. I just really love the colors in this. Subtly vibrant. <laughs> is, that, is that a thing? So here's the second of the big tags made into their own pages. And again, they have. 
the tall tag stuck in there. Another of the corner pockets, a couple of, of the journal cards. I love those arrows, so pretty. And then this is the last page. Again, another clip to hold it closed and another fold out. And another tag. Those cool arrows. So that is the book. Pretty simple, but really pretty. I think this is gorgeous paper. And you can use it in so many ways. I hope you got inspired. Definitely. Okay, this is gonna. I'm gonna have to just go back the other way. I'm really gonna have to learn how to do my cinch. I'm learning. I've only made a few books using my cinch, so I haven't completely mastered the thing yet. The, the nuances. And of course, again, I didn't have the larger ring, so what you gonna do? And definitely give this technique a try. I think it's a... There's a lot of people who show different ways of doing uh, like a stained glass effect. But if you ask me, this is the the closest I've gotten to making it really look like there's actual glass pieces in there. So, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got inspired. If you have any questions, comments about anything, ask me down below. Um, definitely go check out SS Digital Studios page. Gorgeous kit, all gorgeous kits. So definitely go take a look there. All the links will be down below. All right, so like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.